Well, we had a storm last night. And as you might be able to tell, uh, the cockpit drains are not functioning. Now I just boarded the boat and it looks like this drain is not clogged. This drain is clogged. Maybe we can unclog that. Oh, there we go. Yep, got some cleaning to do today. Got me thinking though, maybe these are just clogged up. So let's see. Yeah. All this sand comes from the companionway cover and it's in the, the sand is on that cover to um, just weigh it down like a little bean bag at the bottom it all comes out of here but the stitching's all lost yeah it's going down you can hear it you can see it so um, last weekend I took the booms off so that boom is off and the boom that was hanging here is off. I stowed that one below and I took the sails off obviously and those are down below as well. So I got a little bit done to clean up the deck and today I was thinking I would work the turnbuckles to loosen them up for in preparation of taking the mast out and maybe do some work below and see where the leaks are from this storm. Let's get to work. Well, I grabbed some half inch ply and uh, cut a floorboard. The one that was in here had um, had rotted out the diesel motor that was here, was rebuilt, rebuilt and then um, it was just left sitting on the sole and the, um, the floorboard just couldn't take it. It got some oil or diesel on it and it rotted out. cleaning off the boat here and as you can see there's so much lichen on this thing that it creates a mud and then I'll um, I'll rinse that off then of course the reason for cleaning the boat, even though I'm going to need to refinish the topside paint, is because all of this mud, all this lichen, is the reason for my clogged drains. So, there we go. All that. Goodbye. Now we've got some drainage. Well, last night I spent some time cleaning the deck and this morning or this afternoon I removed um, some wood or teak I guess it might have been it was for a life raft obviously I don't have a life raft right now and if I do get one I may not put it up there so I took that bracket off for it um, boats looking a lot cleaner now but every little bit that I clean I always find something uh, that disconcerts me a little bit. There's a ton of s cracks in the gel coat. And it's just all over. I really want to get down to fixing it, but I just, that's not the first order of business. First order of business is taking care of the haul once I haul it out. Um, I'm going to go to the hardware store and get something to just fill those up temporarily some kind of 
sealant or caulking. Um, but as you can see, there's just been a ton of really bodge jobs. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that they did something and they didn't just leave it. But on the other hand, I wish that they would have done, you know, a little bit more thorough of a job. It would just help because there's a lot of water entry, especially along the tow rail, uh, because that's where it collects. And uh, since it hasn't been taken care of, that is concerning me that it may have gotten to any kind of exposed wood like I showed you earlier. You know, and then there's just stuff like this where you're just wondering what was going on, what were they thinking? Um, but yeah. The uh, cockpit cleaned up nicely. Um, found there's a nice ship's compass in here. I took the wheel off. Um, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'll polish it up, if it'll still work. It's got a little red light. I uh, don't know if that works, but it's pretty cool. Well, I am taking out this old carpet and it's disintegrated. As I take it out, you can just see it. It's just disgusting. I'm hoping that taking some of this out, things like this old carpet, will help uh, with the smell a little bit because it's very musty, mildew smell. And this is our bucket of boat crap just stuff that probably is from the 70s I find things um, we've got these old ships instruments they might still be good and uh, in here we've got original documentation from the sale of the boat um, which was made in 1974 and uh, it's very interesting to find things like that We've got a nice little cassette player, some high fidelity speakers, I'm sure, hanging out in the back there. Overall, it's really interesting to see what's been left in this boat, what appears to uh, not have been touched for a very, very long time. I even found some screens that go in the portholes. So the, um, the boat has some surprises for me, and it's fun to keep rooting them out. All right, it's day two. Uh, we're going to do some cleaning today. Uh, we stopped by the hardware store and got a shop vac and some tools and some rags and some scrapers. And let's go find some stuff to clean. <laughs> Something I forgot to mention yesterday was that that carpet that I found in the lockers was wet. That's why it was so disgusting. Now, carpet is carpet and shelves are shelves and that's okay. I don't, I'm not too concerned about that. That wasn't really what was bothering me. What was bothering me at the end of yesterday I was looking at these knees. These are chain plate knees, and they hold those, which hold that, which is the mast, to the boat, and they hold it up. Those knees get in there, stop right there, and they're not fiberglassed in, and in fact, they're real wet. And that honestly had me pretty bummed out yesterday. Um, California is pretty warm and sunny and doesn't rain that often. So I don't know if they'll definitely be rotten because yesterday was a storm. There was a lot of water up there and um, 
they're really wet and I'm afraid that they're rotten and that I'll have to re replace the chain plate knees. Um, the, I did watch some videos of other people, uh, the channel Have Wind Will Travel, they had to replace stringers and they had a keel that was separating and so they fixed it and I was watching other people deal with bigger problems than rotted chain plate knees which I don't even know if they are yet. Um, so after a little bit of freaking out and then a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of research, feeling a little bit better. I think it's a job I can tackle if I need to, but I really would rather not have to deal with that. On the plus side, that side, the starboard side, um, that's all dry. And the reason that it's wet in here you look up there I don't know if we can see from this angle um, the tow rail underneath the tow rail is where the deck meets you can't see it because of the boom but underneath the tow rail is where the um, the deck is mated the deck to haul joint is and it the tow rail is screwed through that and there's no I don't think there's any kind of um, bedding to uh, keep water out so when it rains it rains and it comes down and it seeps through and it definitely seeps through where the chain plates are and there's three of them there's that one and then there's that one you can see some of the hardware in there. And let's see it. I think there's one more right in there. It's hard to see. Yeah. So that was a bit of a bummer. But um, I'm just going to go through and clean up some stuff and see if I can dry out some of the the boat that was wet yesterday it dries pretty quick though um, since we didn't have any rain last night so back to work this is foam used for insulating the hull it's in places like the this is the settee um, the port side settee and it's uh, behind the cushions it's a little storage cubby, I suppose, or an access cubby. Pull that out. And there is a uh, standing water down in there. Um, this is the pan. This is the interior floor pan. And it's uh, it looks like it's riveted to the hull. Um, I really hope that this standing water hasn't seeped into any of the like structural support of the stringers or anything and that I really hope that there's typically not standing water in here and because California has been in a drought that the boat's still pretty dry but I uh that may be irrational hope um I pulled the same foam from these lockers these were the ones with the carpet and I scraped and vacuumed that um, you can see that they attached the foam by just putting on, I think it's um, like some kind of fairing compound. Maybe it's glue, I don't know. It didn't do much as a glue. It's just, uh, obviously it's just come right off. But on the other hand, who knows how long it's been in there. Maybe this is original. I'd be curious to know if any anybody else had that on their boats or if this was something that the owners did after the fact. Um, in any case, it's just trapping moisture against the hull, and it doesn't look like it's helping things, and so I'm taking it out. Maybe I'll re-insulate in the future. My thought is it's really better to let the hull get condensation and then evaporate than to trap it with insulation. But, I don't know. Maybe my thoughts will change on that. Well, this is what it's come to. It's been raining. And you can see that this bilge is pretty filled up. So, Jerry, my next door neighbor, 
has let me borrow his submersible pool pump. Uh, there we go. Hmm, bilge water. 